Hi everyone, today's video will be discussing bond yields and why they caused the market to turn red over the last two weeks. So if you have invested in tech stocks, in growth stocks, then you would have felt some pain in your portfolio. And I'm going to discuss some of the reasons why, what caused the bond yield to increase and why it did in fact cause pain to our portfolios. <laughs> so without further ado, let's go. Hi everyone, my name is Mary and welcome to Business Trading and Money. As mentioned in my introduction, I'm going to be looking into why these growth and tech stocks sold off. They are and have been since I first started trading one of my favorite sectors. And this, this market correction that came over the past two weeks came at a bit of a surprise and shock to me. I was always slightly on edge that something was going to happen, but this correction, in my opinion, came quite quickly. And all of a sudden, things just started going red and down. And I wasn't really prepared for it. I didn't know why. And I guess it's my own lack of knowledge. And I guess one of the biggest ways to learn a mistake is with where it hurts with money. Thing is though, yes, parts of my portfolio were in the red, but I have not locked in that loss yet. You only lose money when you lock in the loss and you sell out. I sat through it, I stomached it, and I know a lot of you out there also have been going through it. I've been seeing it in all in my messages, in my WhatsApp groups, everyone is freaking out and has freaked out about this market correction. From my research online, I kept coming up with these bond yields. Bond yields are increasing, it's now 1%, whoa, whoa, whoa. What is it about bond yields and how it affects the stock market? So this video is for beginners. We're gonna be explaining what a bond is, what the bond yield is, why the bond yields are going up, how it affects the stock market, and why we're just not out of the woods just yet. So this could mean more volatility and potentially not everything going to the moon. <laughs> so guys, so what is a bond? A bond is in short, basically a loan. A loan that is given to the government or a company. A company might need money, instead of using their own cash reserves, they then put a bond out there, People like you and I can buy those bonds, give the company money, and then we earn interest. Simple as that. Bonds are typically seen as the safe option. Um, people like to have a 60-40 split between their bonds and equities so that they're hedging against issues and risks in the market. Um, but really, all these things are all interlinked and tied together. And this was really seen this week with the fact that the market did dip because of the bond yields. It turns out at the moment, we are all-time highs with the amount of debt that companies have taken on because at the moment debt is really cheap interest rates are at all-time low so it, it means it costs nothing to borrow money and quite simply companies are preferring to borrow money than use their own bank balance go figure i think in my research somewhere i saw that the debt amount at the moment is at 10.5 trillion the most it's ever been and that was to be fair, it's been quite high even prior to COVID, but after COVID or now during COVID, that, that rate has gone up. And obviously interest rates have gone down because the government has tried to encourage people to spend money rather than to save it because they need the economy to keep moving. Okay, typically these are the safe options. These are one of the safest things that you can do with your money um, because you're not going to get it that a government is going to go you know, bankrupt, or at least you hope not. So there is like a rating chart of all the different governments and, and where people rate different countries based on, you know, safety of your money. And looking looking on the list here, you can kind of see like countries like Ecuador, countries like Lebanon, countries like Argentina, Venezuela, uh, they're not necessarily the safest and you may not get your money, <laughs> initial payment back if you loan your money to these governments. But that's another topic for another day. If you are thinking about going into bonds, countries obviously with a very good rating like the UK, <laughs> America, uh, Europe, the EU, they are likely to be safe havens for your money. And I do this because I'm going to explain later why, as it's not necessarily that safe. And it's the reason why people are selling out of their bonds. Next point. So as with all investments, you have the yield and that is how much money you get back for your money and it's made up simply of this formula so you have the bond yield equals the coupon amount divided by the price of the bond so how much you're getting how much money you you putting out so how much you're getting back since the start of covid bond yields pretty much dropped off the edge of the earth and have been bubbling under at about 0.8% and bubbling 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 0 0.8, just gently plodding along. 
October comes along and we finally see some rise in the bond yields. And this already started to initially freak people out a bit, but not that much, not as much as the freak out that happened, obviously, this past two weeks. But then January comes along and it really freaked the market out because the bond yield went from 0 0.9 to about 1.5%. And that was like a, a steep incline. I think people like general slow changes. And when things go from this gradual incline to this, people freak out. And that's what happened to the market. The market freaked out about the bond yields. But what does bond deals have to do with the stock market? Why, why is it getting in the way of us going to the moon? What is the issue with the bond yields? Bond yields is usually seen as an indicator of a, a country's economy. And there are a few main reasons as to why there's been an increase in bond yields. The first, fiscal stimulus. So this is when the government, as we know, is printing tons of money to be pumped into the economy in the form of your stimulus checks. 1.9 trillion is the new number that they're planning to give to people to encourage growth and, and the economy and to help people survive ultimately. A lot of people have lost their jobs during this time, but that's their plan in order to make sure there isn't a recession and to keep people ticking over during this time of economic slow, slow growth because of the coronavirus. With that said, every action has another reaction. And as a result, people are thinking this is leading to inflation, which I'll talk about later. The next thing is possible growth for the economy. So things are starting to open, vaccines are being jabbed into people's arms, like it's also going out of fashion. And the world is slowly but surely gonna start opening. And I think people are well aware that come, well, especially in the UK, come June, I think it's the 22nd, things are gonna be open and there's gonna be no restrictions and we're gonna be free. People can go shopping and spend their money. People can go to restaurants, people can enjoy life again. And that promise and that hope is the reason why growth is expected to be fantastic over the next eight months when the economy goes back to normal and people start spending as they normally do especially in things like entertainment in things like concerts and things like travel and things like restaurant like all the things that have been the reopening plays and that's why we've seen a definite increase in the stock prices of certain reopening shops for instance macy's for instance this past week went up amazingly i'm in coty that went up obviously that's linked to makeup and people in shops and going out so all the reopening plays definitely had a fantastic rally this week but um as a result of that it did then mean that people were pulling their money out of tech stocks and pulling their money out of growth stocks into more immediate quicker returns and Boeing for instance was another good one because they're hoping that travel is going to start up again in the next six months or less so with that said with this growth in the economy which is a good thing we mustn't forget that is a fantastic thing it's what we want it naturally leads to more inflation the I word again is inflation this scary word of inflation is coming up again but as a result growth you have growth naturally inflation comes with growth and that's what's coming so inflation so for many years America has mm, had quite low inflation and as a result it hasn't really been a concern but now with all these different effects all this government money sloshing around in the markets and out there it's leading to panic and fears that inflation is going to happen and as a result it pushes bond yields up because they kind of work inversely of each other bonds become less attractive and they work like a seesaw because bond yields are about a long period of time of receiving money and if your money is going to be worse off in the future and a lot worse off in the future you're not going to want the bond yield you don't want the bond money in the future now do you because it's going to be worth less so people get out of bonds and that's why the bond yields have gone up so we have inflation worries we have growth in the economy and we have fiscal stimulus all three big things that are affecting the bond yields and as the reason why the stock market especially in growth stocks and tech stocks sold off so interest rates interest rates have been low they were lowered a lot when this whole economic meltdown started back in march with the coronavirus and they've been low ever since and people are now with the possible economy opening very soon they're now starting to assume that they're going to start in increasing interest rates and this obviously will freak people out because everything becomes more expensive when interest rates go up it, low interest rates is a good thing because it sparks people to borrow more and therefore invest more in their companies. When interest rates are high, they obviously have to pay higher taxes, 
higher everything and less money is spent on innovation and growth in an economy so with the, that worry in the backs of people's mind people are then therefore concerned that interest rates are going to cripple and dampen the growth stocks so there was a meeting with this chap named pal <laughs> And uh, when he was speaking, literally the bond yields went crazy. They went up when he was speaking because people didn't believe the fact that he was saying, don't worry, the interest rates are not going to go up yet. We're going to make sure that there is real strong growth in the economy and that we're fine before we put interest rates up. But the markets didn't react well. And that's when we had one of the biggest sells, sells in the tech stocks. And um, obviously the bond yields went crazy and people were panicking. So there's been a lot of selling pressure in the bonds and people thinking about where they're going to put their money instead because of this fear of inflation. When the bond yield does increase, typically and in the past historically, people like to put their money into things that are a bit more safer. And that isn't the growth stocks. So what has been my strategy and what have I learned from this? So now we're having this sort of sell off in the market. It did has and it has since recovered, not back to its normal. And Nasdaq is still not definitely not back to its what it was. But it definitely has regained. Um, things like Apple is still cheap in comparison to where it has been. So if you are looking for something to buy, I'll always say go for a nice Apple. At the moment, the trend of the stock market seems to be moving into cyclicals and value stocks, which had the most growth. And in my portfolio, those are the ones that sort of saved it a bit. Bank stocks went up well because obviously people know that the interest rates are going to go up. So they think they're going to benefit from that, which they will. Again, I was a bit slow. I didn't realise this move. <laughs> so I can't go and buy in now because things like JP Morgan are at all time highs. So it's something I'm going to keep on my radar for when it starts to pull back a bit. I'll definitely go into something like some bank stocks. Typically, historically, when yields rise, markets typically sell off. And that's what we experienced the past two weeks. <laughs> it's been hard. I'm not going to lie. It has been hard. Just watching, you know, your money just disappear. But as I said earlier, you don't actually lose money until you sell that stock or share. So in conclusion, I would say that yes, this week was significantly better than previous weeks. The people that did buy the dip when the dip came and it came multiple times, you would have been rewarded for your choice because a lot of these growth stocks did get back to reasonable levels. But there is to say the market is still quite volatile with dramatic pullbacks and advancements day to day. So that is to say, keep an eye on your on the bond yields. Keep an eye. At the moment, we are we have come off the ultima, well, the highs of 1.5, but we are verging up and down. And as a result, it's going to have an effect on your portfolio if you are heavily weighted in growth and tech stocks. Keep an eye on that figure because if we have another bump and increase in that number is going to likely result in your particular portfolio decreasing and ways to avoid massive losses <laughs> in such a thing i personally i'm moving more of my money into just having some in the s p 500 an index fund of the 500 companies because despite the fact the nasdaq sold off massively and these growth stocks sold off massively the nasdaq was only pretty much down like one percent it was quite small and therefore it was safe and I thought to myself, I, I already had a proportion of my money in there, but it, compared to everything else, it's quite small. And I thought, oh, I should probably put more in. And particular sells off like this or market corrections, it really does highlight to you if you are over overweighted in certain stocks. Because you can see that, oh, your portfolio is down here, but it's up there. So it balances itself out. And that you're not all panicking that you've lost like all your money because it's all gone down. So definitely make sure you have a variety of different sectors in your portfolio. One way to do that quite simply and easily is just to have the S&P 500, which obviously takes the top 500 companies in America into their portfolio. And uh, you get a bit of access to all of those companies all in one go. So that's one thing. If you have enjoyed this video and my basic explanation as to why the market sold off and what you need to be aware of, be sure to click that like button. It really helps me and the algorithms as always. And if you would like to come back to see more of my videos, be sure to click the subscribe button. I've got more videos coming out every week. I'm trying to do them weekly now. And just on a variety of things of what I learn along the way for beginner investors. I've got a few book reviews coming out as well and my portfolio. 
Once again, my name is Mary from Business Trading and Money. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you at the next video.